Good evening. Good to see everyone tonight as we come to worship our Lord. And uh, I'm sorry I wasn't able to join you downstairs for dinner this evening. Uh, Marianne and I had some things to take care of with our son and grandson, so uh, we've taken care of that. But we are here and gathered for worship. Uh, our uh, midweek uh, Lenten series continues tonight as we focus on Simon of Cyrene. Uh, this turned out to be quite a challenge preparing a message about him because he gets about one verse in each of the Gospels, so there's not a whole lot to draw from. And I think we are going to get some insights into Simon and relate ourselves to, uh, to his situation as well. So friends, let us begin our worship. And we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful. Slowly to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, and he relents over disaster. Jesus said, If any man would come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross, and follow me. Christ was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our enemies. Jesus said, The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And he said to all, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever would lose or would save his life will lose it. For whoever loses his life for my sake, will save. Friends, at this time, invite us all to rise for our opening hymn, Abide with us, our Savior.
grant that your Holy Spirit may keep our faith strong, so that we may never doubt your unfathomable love. As a bystander, carry our Lord's cross on the march to the hill. May we pick up our cross and follow him, bearing our burden, counting the cost, considering we all we have as lost for the sake of Christ. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seen. Our first reading this evening is taken from the book of Deuteronomy, the 11th chapter. Fix these words of mine in your hearts and minds. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Teach them to your children, talking about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down when you get up. Break them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates, so that your days and the days of your children may be many in the land the Lord swore to give your ancestors, as many as the days that the heavens are above the earth. See, I am setting before you today a blessing and a curse. The blessing if you obey the commands of the Lord your God that I am giving you today. The curse if you disobey the commands of the Lord your God and turn from the way that I command you today by following other gods which you have not known. You are about to cross the Jordan to enter and take possession of the land your, the Lord your God is giving you. When you have taken it over and are living there, be sure that you obey all the decrees and laws I am setting before you today. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Let us rise to the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 23rd chapter. And as they led him away, they seized one Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country and laid on him the cross, to carry it behind Jesus. And there followed him a great multitude of the people, and of women who were mourning and lamenting for him. But turning to them, Jesus said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming, when they will say, Blessed are the barren, and the wounds that never bore, and the breasts that never nurse. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if they do these things when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? This is the Gospel of the Lord.
grace, mercy, and peace be unto you. From God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In the wrong place, at the wrong time. Or not. Well, that's the title of tonight's message. And it's also our question about one Simon of Cyrene. Now, one thing Jewish citizens and Jewish visitors to Jerusalem would quickly learn is when Rome is executing judgment, stay out of the way. But there were many bystanders or spectators from a distance watching as a parade the procession of Jesus and his executioners marching to the crucifixion site. Now some would be cheering for Israel to finally rid themselves of this blasphemer, the one who dares to equate himself with God. While others were mourning the kind, compassionate prophet being led like a gentle lamb to the slaughter. Because of the beating that he'd already endured, along with sleep, deprivation, and perhaps even hunger, Jesus was severely weakened, and he was now unable to carry his cross. And a bystander, Simon of Cyrene, is drafted. He is picked out of the crowd to step in. Now, Cyrene is a city in Libya, in Africa, making Simon a likely visitor, a pilgrim to Jerusalem for the Passover. Wrong place, wrong time. Simon is suddenly thrust into salvation history to contribute his small part to God's grand story. Scripture does not tell us if words were exchanged between Jesus and Simon. Did Jesus offer Simon a cryptic message that only faith could understand? Or did Simon see a better Jesus and say, don't worry, I got this for you. We don't know. But let us take the liberty of at least imagining the thoughts exchanged as the two would make eye contact. First, what did Jesus see in Simon's eyes? He would no doubt see a sinner, one caught up in a fallen world. Yet Simon was another object of God's love for humanity. Simon's eyes might reveal his own personal epiphany, realization that he is now in the presence of the Savior of the world and the salvation that he brings unfolding. Jesus might see in Simon's eyes that he, for a moment, is not alone. Now what would Simon see in Jesus' eyes? Was Simon, before any of this, a believer? Did word of Jesus' ministry and uh, miracles reach Simon? Did Simon know who Jesus was, why he was suffering, why he was sentenced to die? Did Simon see in Jesus' eyes more than distress, more than the agony that was being endured? Did Simon see the weight of the world's sin in Jesus' eyes? Would Simon see the eyes of compassion, the eyes of a God who so loved the world, the eyes of salvation's plan coming to fruition so close to him? 
In this moment, bearing what was probably a 100 pound crossbar on his shoulders, would Simon see his own circumstance as a curse or as a blessing and a privilege? What is certain that, is that this moment for Simon would prove to be more than a close call, more than a brush with death, but a personal connection to the one called Messiah. How do we know this? Quietly, some 25 years later, Rufus, the son of Simon of Cyrene, is called out by Paul with greetings in the book of Romans, making Simon and his family likely converts to Christ, following in his way, in a most literal way, following in the footsteps of our Lord. Truly, in that march to the cross, in a way no one else ever has. I believe Simon's life was changed by this event, being in the wrong place at the wrong time. And now our lives have also been changed. We tonight are given a glimpse of the suffering to come, the cost of our sins, the price that was paid. So are we now merely bystanders in salvation story? Or are we the story? Are we in the story? When Jesus looks into your eyes, what does he see? Does he see a repentant sinner? Does he find sorrow in your eyes? Does he find faith and humble thanksgiving for what he is about to do for you? Out of undying love for you. And to answer that, we only need to ask, what do we see in Jesus' eyes on his march to the cross for us? Do we see the object of our faith? Do we see the very Son of God? Do we see the one who values our life and our faith more than his own human life? Do we see the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world? Do we see in his eyes the light of life? Do we see our hope and our salvation in him? Are we willing to carry our own cross here in our lives in support of him? Has the word of God, Jesus himself, become for us a lamp for our feet and a light for our path? Are we, in our walk of faith, in the right place, at the right time? Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus.
and serve Him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness. Just as He has risen from the dead, lives and reigns through all eternity. Amen. You may be seated as we begin our offering. He was assigned a grave with the wicked, and with the rich in his death. Though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mind, yet it was the Lord's will to crush him, and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life a guilt offering, he will see his offspring, and prolong his days, and the will of the Lord prosper in his hand. Please rise with Let us recite together Luther's evening prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, 
that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. But your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Amen.
Very wonderful job as always. Thank you very much, brother. Friends, go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Get home safe. We all want to do this again. Have a blessed night.